Nokia is one of the finest examples of how a brand can reinvent itself and dramatically up its game in a very short period of time, and its third generation Sorento is a perfect specimen of this. As it's now longer and wider than before, it offers more practicality, but its improvements in build quality and driving dynamics are what impress the most. And in terms of looks, its design may not be overly adventurous, but you can't deny that that Tiger nose front grille is pretty eye-catching. So, what's it up against? Well, as it's a large 4x4, it's looking to challenge anything from brands such as Volkswagen and Land Rover. The first thing you'll probably notice about the cabin is this new dashboard topper, which just shouts premium saloon. And this upmarket feel is met with loads of soft touch materials scattered around. The infotainment setup has been injected with some 21st century zest as well, with this silver trim neatly packing its touchscreen and buttons together. As with Kia's other current infotainment setups, this is brilliantly responsive and ridiculously easy to use. One thing we're not a fan of though, is this climate control setup slightly below it, which seems to bulge out at you a bit. Speaking of climate control, there's only one trim you're ever really going to need, and want for that matter, which is the KX2 trim that we have. This comes with dual aircon, heated seats, a reversing camera, and of course this 7 inch touchscreen, which also comes with sat nav. Increased dimensions means more passenger and storage space, not that it was a problem in the last model. As you can see, in the first row of passenger seats, there's plenty of space and the second row is pretty good as well. Average sized adults should be happy enough. A few small but convenient features include these seat belts which neatly fold away so your middle passengers don't have to sit on them, an armrest with two handy cup holders, and USB connectivity which is easy to access in the rear. To be honest, when it comes to comfort for rear passengers, the ability to slide these back and forth and even recline them means you're going to find a winning combination to keep everyone happy. With all seven seats in place, boot space is minimal at 140 litres. However, fold this back row away and there's a massive 605 litres. Fold the other row of seats away and there's 1,662 litres. It's not class leading, but it is impressive. The Sorento is definitely a milestone for Kia when it comes to driving dynamics and refinement. The steering, for example, feels much more connected to the front wheels than any other Kia, getting rid of that sometimes elastic -y feel and replacing it with better feedback. This reassurance is particularly important when you consider the size of the Sorento and the somewhat unpredictably twisty and narrow British roads. As well as it being more engaging to drive, comfort all round is top notch, with insulation from the outside world like wind and road noise being really good, all round visibility being excellent and its cushion suspension can easily deal with unpredictably bumpy roads. As with most cars this size, you will get a bit of body roll if you throw it into a corner at speed, but to be honest, if you want to go into corners at speed then you shouldn't really be looking at a Sorento. When it comes to driving off-road, the Sorento may not have the same finesse as a Land Rover Discovery, but it will handle the majority of what you're likely to throw at it, be it small hills or muddy tracks. The engine lineup couldn't be simpler, as there's just one to choose from, a 2.2-litre turbo diesel with 197 brake horsepower. Now, sometimes cars of this size can feel a bit lethargic regardless of how much horsepower is under the bonnet. This certainly isn't the case with the Sorento, as it feels like it's got a lot of personality and a bit of oomph about it. And it feels much nippier than its 0 to 62 miles per hour sprint time of 9 seconds suggests. The only choice when it comes to powertrain setup is whether you go for a manual or automatic gearbox, the main variable here being fuel economy. In real world driving, the manual will return around 40 miles per gallon. Go for the auto and it's slightly lower, at around 30 to 35, par for the course really. CO2 starts from 149 grams per kilometre, pretty impressive compared to the competition anyway. The term game changing is used quite a lot in the car industry, but it certainly applies to the Sorento. And whereas some of Kia's models merely meet the threshold when it comes to competition, the Sorento stands out as genuinely impressive and has carved itself a solid spot as an upmarket 4x4. And I haven't even mentioned its price yet. The Sorento starts from just under 30 grand, which is a few grand cheaper than the Land Rover Discovery Sport and almost £15,000 cheaper than the Volkswagen Touareg. But do you think the Sorento is worthy of Land Rover and Volkswagen competition? Let us know in the comments section below and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.
If you want to watch more of our 4x4 reviews, click one of the links on screen now.